On April 20, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon disaster changed the lives of millions living near the Gulf of Mexico, as well as the scientists who responded to the crisis. These are some of their stories, intimate portraits of research, innovation, discovery. Welcome, I'm Jim McNamee, editor of Dispatches from the Gulf, a series of documentaries, short videos, and podcasts. Today we'll hear about the unsettling events that happened in a small Gulf of Mexico barrier island community just after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Though the disaster occurred in 2010, those first few days are still fresh in the memory of Grand Isle, Louisiana's port director, Wayne Keller. When I first heard about the spill, my first concern was if lives were lost. We had so many people in the oil industry that it was very likely that somebody I knew would have been on the rig. Our major concern was what the weather was going to do, whether or not it was going to push the oil and impact Grand Isle. Part of it was waiting for something that you weren't sure that was going to happen. And of course, not knowing how bad it was going to be when it finally came here. There was quite a few people that thought maybe it was going to bypass us. We waited 30 days, not knowing if and when it was going to hit. We were quite certain we were going to be impacted and I believe it was about the 31st day or so that we actually first started seeing evidence. Actually, I was the first one to spot it coming in. In the beginning, it was quite spotty, but within a day or so, we were inundated. It was mind boggling. Everybody just could not believe how much oil was on the beaches. Grand Isle is Louisiana's only inhabited barrier island town in the Gulf of Mexico. The year-round population of about a 1,000 is extraordinarily resilient, having endured many hurricanes and floods over the years. But nothing could have prepared them for an oil spill that would turn their community into a war zone. I use the term war zone because It's almost as if the cleanup people were the enemy because it was taking away our lives. Instead of thinking of them as our salvation, we still thought of them basically as as our enemy. The biggest problem was that basically we felt as if we were losing control of our freedom, control of everything. I mean, we weren't allowed to go on the beach, couldn't get to a restaurant or anything else because it was just packed with news media. It was a circus. It got to the point where you really didn't believe anything coming from anybody. I don't care if it was from the Coast Guard, from the cleanup companies. Basically, you you didn't know who to believe and basically didn't believe anybody. Within a few days, tourism completely stopped. Even camp owners on the beach weren't able to cross a line on the beach. We had three or four police departments down here working security, keeping people off the beach. Tourism was non-existent. There was quite a bit of anger. Arguments were very common. I was tasked by the governor to be the liaison with the National Guard, and at one time I had security telling me I couldn't get on the island unless I had 15 different passes. I mean, it was horrible. You felt as if you had no more freedom and no more rights. It was extremely frustrating. Years after the oil spill, Grand Isle has rebounded. I'd say we're back to normal as far as being able to use the beach. Occasionally there'll be children digging in the sand and you'll hit some spots of oil. Wildlife wise, I I think we've rebounded fairly close. But one question still lingers in this environmentally fragile community. What will happen if another major oil spill occurs? Our lives are so intertwined with the oil industry. To us, that's part of our economy. I think we're a lot safer now as far as a major oil spill because of financial reasons. I think companies basically are realizing they've really got to not put money ahead of safety. We just hope and pray that the oil industry has learned something from this mess. Today, thousands of scientists, oceanographers, chemists, engineers, biologists, are all working together to develop newer and better ways to understand and ease the impact of oil spills. To learn more about their work, visit our webpage at dispatchesfromthegulf.com. 
Funding for this podcast was provided by a grant by the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative. And thanks for listening.